next round of Australia. Australia Council's International Engagement Fund. My name is Norman Armour and I'll be your co-host this afternoon or in my case in the evening, it's 10 a.m., uh, sorry, 10 p.m. where I am. I'm the International Engagement Consultant for North America at the Australia Council and joining me on screen is, is TMI Bauman, Senior Manager, International Engagement. For a visual description, I'm 63 years old. I have fair complexion, white hair, and I wear a pair of black, large frame glasses. I'm of Scottish and Irish descent, Maharaj County Derry and Glasgow to be precise. I've worked for and with the Australia Council for four and a half years and currently consult the equivalent of three days per week. I acknowledge that I'm joining you in this conversation from the west coast of Turtle Island, otherwise known as Vancouver, Canada, and the traditional unceded territories of the Musqueam, the Squamish, and the Tsleil-Waututh First Nations. Um, I also respectfully acknowledge the traditional custodians of nations throughout this continent, including the traditional lands from where you are in the world today. I pay my respects to elders past and present and emerging. Uh, for today, uh, please feel free to drop a note in the chat to also introduce yourself and acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands you are joining from today. Say hello to everybody. It's really great to, to, to hear and see um, your uh, introductions. We hope today's session um, can be a dialogue amongst us all. There are two main ways you can contribute in today's conversation. You can add comments to the chat. You can also ask questions when we switch over to the breakout rooms in a moment. Uh, I don't know about you, but even after two and a half years, I still find all of this quite nerve wracking and, nerve and uh, jittery and such. So I hope we kind of settle into a nice conversation today and that you find the information that you're hoping for. We are recording today's session. If you need to leave the conversation because of this, please let the international team know, know via email. I would also like to introduce and thank our Auslan interpreters, Marnie Van Vliet and Claire Murray, who are providing Auslan support. You can turn on live captions for this session. Instructions will be in the, in the chat window shortly. If you have any technical difficulties, uh, our tech support for this session is Tamina Maskanyar, you can raise your Zoom hand through the raise hand button that's down at the bottom in the, in the reactions. Um, and you, um, you can also get in uh, with the tech issues, you can get in touch with Tamina by, um, through uh, the chat line. There's also an email address in the same email that you received this morning to get the Zoom link, link for the session. So if you fall off, you can get back in using that uh, very same link. Now, uh, today's session will last about an hour. For the first part of the session, uh, around half an hour, we'll hear from TMI my Bauman, Senior Manager, International Engagement, about the key items to be aware of for this next round of the International Engagement Fund, as well as a brief overview of the International Engagement Strategy 2021 to 2025. For the second half, We'll break out into three Zoom rooms to highlight case studies of successful, successful international projects that address the priorities of the international engagement strategy. And this will be your opportunity to ask questions to each of the hosts in the breakout room. At any time during the conversation, if you are finding the discussions difficult or stressful, you are very welcome to take a break and come back. We want you to have a positive conversation, but we also understand that we're living still very much in challenging times. First and foremost, remember to take care of yourself. And if you're joining from Australia, you can access one of the helplines in the chat should you need it. I uh, was gonna put that in a chat line for you. I'd also like to share with everyone the participation uh, rules of the session and, and the values which will guide our discussion today. Respectful, professional, and in genuine engagement deep listening, openness, non-judgment, safety, and to add for me personally, kindness. I figure um, you know, these days and in life in general, it usually takes less energy to be kind than, than not. So I encourage you to be kind and compassionate to all of us in the conversation. Now, I'm very pleased that we are joined 
developed by TIA uh, and members of the international engagement team and the artist services team as well in today's session and uh, who TIA will introduce in a moment. So, hello TIA, uh, I'm gonna pass it over to you for uh, an introduction. Thanks so much, Norman. Um, hello, everyone. I am Tia Bauman. I'm the Senior Manager of International Engagement, joining in from unceded Gadigal land. Uh, I am a Eurasian woman with sparkly eyeshadow on. I have long black hair and I'm wearing a black shirt. I'm also surrounded by a pink virtual background that is titled International Engagement. And I am coming into this conversation from the lands of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. And I pay my respects to elders past, present and future. And I'd like to extend that respect to any First Nations peers in this virtual space with us today. So I am joined by several excellent colleagues from the international engagement and artist services teams today. So in brief, I am joined by International Engagement Advisors, Ellen Dwyer and Chloe Yan Lee, Celia Colthard, our Global First Nations producer, Venice Biennale Project Manager, Tamina Maskinya, and Project Officer, Major Projects, Niwa Muruja, and Norman, who you have all met now. Um, I'm also joined by three brilliant colleagues from the Artist Services team, Dane Hunterup, Melina Scarcella and Rebecca Robertson. Uh, you'll see these team members have colored Zoom backgrounds and they will introduce themselves further in the breakout rooms. Thanks. Uh, uh, thanks, Tia. Um, could you, uh, first off, uh, give us a high level overview of the changes made to this round of the International Engagement Fund and what it perhaps means for folks preparing uh, applications. Yeah, for sure. So critically, as hopefully everyone is aware by now, applications to the current round of the International Engagement Fund should be made by applying to either the arts projects for organizations or arts projects for individuals and groups. Programs that are both closing at 3 p.m. Um, Australian Eastern Time, Tuesday, 6th of September, 2022. Um, so the links to these programs um, will be dropped in the chat um, in a second. Uh, so both of these programs support all of the activities the previous rounds of the International Engagement Fund supported. And these are professional skills development, including self-directed mentoring and residencies, the creation of new work, practice-based research, creative development, experimentation, collaborations and exchanges, touring, festivals, productions, exhibitions, performances, publishing, recording, promotion and marketing, market development activity, and activities that creatively engage communities. These activities can take place nationally, internationally, online, or in a combination of in-person and online or hybrid activities. And uh, Tia, um, how will the International Engagement Fund be applied to the current round of arts projects? Mm -hmm. um, just to reiterate, arts projects for organizations and arts projects for individuals and groups have always supported international activity. So in this current round of arts projects, each of these programs will have additional funding from the International Engagement Fund to support competitive applications that meet the priorities of the International Engagement Strategy 2021 to 2025. As a result, this additional funding will support more international activity within two arts projects rounds. And could you please expand upon the international engagement funds priorities and how these can perhaps connect with applications folks are preparing for arts project projects. Yeah. Um, so where applications include international activity, they should respond to or address the priorities of the international engagement strategy. 
So over the past two years, many of the usual ways of working internationally have been disrupted from the way we connect and network with peers through to collaboration, presentation and distribution. So our new strategy was informed by these conditions and looks ahead to the future where the effects of the pandemic may continue to impact international activity. As well as the pandemic, the past five years have seen increasing awareness of climate sustainable practice and shifting geopolitics. Calls for sustainable and decolonized practice have also demanded consideration of new ways of working. So what we encourage you to consider when putting together your applications is how your proposed activity or project aligns to the strategy's priorities. Not every single priority, but perhaps one or two, which are the most relevant to what you hope to do in your international work. So I'm gonna expand on each priority area um, of which there are a few. Um, so the priorities of the new strategy are to rethink and expand the concept of mobility. So that's through testing dynamic engagement models that include digital, hybrid, and in-person connection. Two, leverage technologies and digital platforms for creation, distribution, networking, and increasing discoverability of Australian work. Um, activate borderless thinking. So building reciprocal and multilateral partnerships across regions and industries and leveraging co-investment. Or strengthening First Nations exchange, that is First Nations led and self-determined. Five, amplify Asia Pacific engagement and the perspectives of the Asia Pacific diaspora in Australia. Six, diversify income and revenue streams to foster sustainable careers and business models by increasing access to markets, information and networks, and to showcase Australian work to global audiences and influencers. The next one, foster risk-taking experimentation and innovation um, in creation, distribution, connection and profile building. Um, the next one, center equity and access and reflect Australia's diversity. And finally, embed sustainability through research and investment in best practice models and frameworks to minimize the sector's carbon footprint. Um, so we'll just drop the international engagement strategy link um, in the chat as well, just in case you'd like to refer to it. So, on the International Engagement Fund website, um, we've outlined a number of successful case studies that either received international funding from Australia Council or types of activities that align with the priorities of the fund. Um, you'll see a link to this chat in the window. You'll see a link to this in the chat window shortly. So I really encourage you to take a look at the case studies to get a sense of how the strategic priorities have been applied when scoping and developing um, these international engagement projects. Uh, thanks, Tia. Um, the arts projects programs, to, for uh, which for most of us are known as core grants, are assessed by peer panels based on art form. Could you speak a little a bit about what the assessment process will be for internationally focused applications uh, into these two programs? Mm -hmm. So all applications will be categorized into art form panels. The council has nine assessment panels. Um, they are First Nations, Community Arts and Cultural Development, Dance, Emerging and Experimental Arts, Literature, Multi-Art Form, Music, Theatre and Visual Arts. The membership of the peer panels rotates with peers selected from the pool in response to the grant categories being assessed. Australia Council selects peers who are both knowledgeable and representative and will ensure international experience is factored into the selection process. We also will brief all peer panels on the international engagement strategy and notify them of the additional funding offered to this round of arts projects, individuals and groups 
and arts projects organizations from the International Engagement Fund. Thanks, Tia. And now, before we head into break rooms, uh, we do have time for uh, a couple of questions. Um, I think we actually have time for more than a couple of questions uh, that folks may feel beneficial to ask now while everyone is here together. If you have a question, please uh, use the raise the hand function or type your question into the chat window. Um, if we don't um, get any type questions, we can certainly answer, answer uh, questions later in the breakout rooms as the uh, chat window contents will transfer across. So I'm just gonna remember to do the gallery thing here. It's probably easiest too to uh, put them into the chat line because uh, we of course have so many people joining us today. Um, yes, so first question, Tia. Um, can I just check that the fund, uh, the funding range, is it up to 100,000? How does that uh, work? Or are there two levels of funding? Is that correct? I think for um, individuals and groups, it's up to 50K. Um, and for organizations, it goes up to 100,000. Um, so there's two tiers of funding there. Great. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, Aaron asks, uh, were screen arts one of the panels? Are there screen arts to be one of the panels? Um, no. So I believe um, if there's any international projects that involve screen-based media, um, best to go to Screen Australia as the funding organisation. Okay. Uh, Vicky has a question. Will this be a permanent change or is this a temporary measure for the addressing of international applications? Um, so this is a pilot um, fund. Um, so basically, we will reevaluate um, how this is run, um, and potentially it, it may be that it is quite successful as a, as a process, um, in which case we will continue with this method. Um, but essentially, it'll go through another process of evaluation, um, and then we'll make the necessary iterations for the next round. Uh, to, to, um, and do you figure, uh, Tia, that people's feedback from the sector will be key to, um, to adjusting and, and, and adapting or changing in any way going forward with uh, this pilot? Yeah, absolutely. So um, if you're finding that this is affecting you um, positively or negatively, as it were, um, please send through any feedback um, to our international team or our artist services team. Um, and then we will definitely take that feedback and advice on board in the way we tailor and um, design the fund moving forward. Great, thank you, Tina. Um, um, this is a question from somebody. Uh, what is, uh, Tamina shared, what is the total amount of funding available? Uh, so we're not actually privy to um, outline how much we have um, per round um, because it can actually fluctuate um, per round um, and it can also affect the peer assessment process, the probity around the peer assessment process. Um, but generally, um, we have a success rate of between 15 and 20 percent um, of the applications that come through. Um, the AP or APO round and also the IEF round. So highly competitive. Um, a question from Andy. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks for the time. But uh, could you advise if commercial galleries attending international art fairs, are they eligible? Can they apply? Uh, I think yes. Um, if it addresses um, one of the key strategic priorities, um, potentially around market development or diversifying income streams, um, then if there's an argument that can be made about attending more commercial platforms uh, for commercial galleries, then we'd definitely be open to hearing about that. And Dane, you came on screen. Would you like to add to that? Oh, I don't know why I came on screen, but but yes, yes, you can as a gallery <laughs> apply to do that. You can also, we will be allocating um, the funding from um, arts projects that normally go to international projects as well. Um, so you can choose how you address your application and we will be supporting things through both ways. Oh, great, thank you, Dan. Um, I think we've got, uh, 
is film considered? I think we we answered the question around film, I, I believe. Uh, I think so. um, Joanne Coley uh, has a question. Okay. Um, maybe if you want to drop it in the chat. Oh, can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, look, yeah, I've been asked to exhibit in Poland next year. And um, their local government has already sponsored me from their end. So they're taking care of everything when I get there. Um, but I'm looking for Australian sponsorship to send me over. But some of my work, I'm actually collaborating with Indigenous artists as well. So it's, it's quite a very different um, scenario. They've also asked me to fly over in October of this year to kind of promote it because I'm on a Netflix show that's coming out next year. So I think they wanted me to do that just to give them a bit of extra kind of promotion. Um, and then I've been asked to exhibit in November here in Perth as well. So I just wanted to know, um, you know, is this, oh, I'm very new to this. I've only just found this site and, and, and uh, apply or about to apply. And I just wanted to know when the cutoff is, would that count for this year or would it be more May that I'd probably be needing help with? Um, just on the um, engagement and collaboration with First Nations artists, um, we actually have um, some First Nations cultural intellectual property protocols um, that we have released. So essentially any creative protect practitioners who want to work with Indigenous artists or engage with Indigenous cultural heritage and projects um, that are funded by the Australia Council for the Arts are required to comply with these protocol guides um, as a condition of funding. So I think um, one of our team can drop those protocols. Um, really? Um, but that's generally a condition. Um, so I think the funding round closes on the 6th of September um, yep. and projects can take place, is it one year, um, up to one year or two no. years? Two. Two, two years yeah. after. Um, so, oh. yeah. Um, Would October be running and cutting it too fine? So if you put in an application to this round, your project can't commence before the 1st of December 2022. Uh, so, it, right. so it may be that the timing uh, isn't right, but we could certainly have a conversation about our next funding round in March, Joanne. Okay. If I applied for this one, which begins in December, would that also, because it's actually going to be occurring in May next year, would that then work with May? We could certainly talk about you coming in for a particular aspect of your project, but I would encourage you in this instance to get in contact with the artist services team and we can really talk about the finer details of your project. Oh, thank you so much. No because problem. I didn't realise it also included literature because I've got three books coming out, um, one this year and two early next year, and I was really quite keen to take them over with me. Um, there's only two pieces that are Indigenous. Um, the rest of the collection is just mine, um, but they really want to encourage Australian art. Um, they've only chose, chosen two Australian artists here to exhibit there alongside a um, Polish uh, sculpturist because I'm doing a lot of glass art um, that's going to work in really well there. So, yeah, I'm really keen to see what I can do on this end. Absolutely. I'll Great. drop our uh, information in the chat and you can give us a call. Oh, thank you so much. Wonderful. Great. I'm going to try a couple of quick questions here. One uh, which is internationally fr from uh, Francesca. Uh, for international applicants who want to partner with an Australian artist or organisation, are there separ like, separate guidelines for that? I don't believe there is. Is that right, Tia? Um, not that I'm aware of. Um, I believe if you would like more information or um, advice on how to approach the application process, please definitely reach out um, to the artist services team or the international engagement team. We can help um, help with that application process. Um, but I don't think there's any kind of like resources out there around collaborative methods or um, from Australia Council, not that I'm aware of. 
Great. Melina, can you confirm that organizations receiving four-year funding are not eligible to apply? Uh, My microphone was off. Sorry about that. No, that is correct, Norman. So if you are currently in receipt of Australia Council multi-year funding, um, you will not be eligible to apply to this next round. Okay, great. I'm going to try and just slip in a couple more very quickly here. Uh, applications online or by post? All Dear. online. And Melina, thank you. Um, uh, is funding available to successful applicants for two years? Would that require a, a second application? I'm not sure if I understand that. So if you apply, your project can run up to two years. So it's basically the one application that you're putting in, but it's a two year project. Your project doesn't have to run for two years. It can be a three month project, but the maximum time that it can run is for a period of up to two years. And can you apply across several rounds for a multi-stage project? Uh, no. Essentially a so no. if, if it is, a, it depends on the art form, but it sounds like a multi-arts application. But if it's a multi-staged project, maybe focus on um, one particular stage of the project and make that the focus of your application for September. But once again, please contact us and we can talk about the finer details of your proposal. Great. I think I can answer this. The individual, uh, for individuals, the um, maximum is 50K. Uh, and I think we need to sort of switch over to the breakout rooms. Is that correct, Tia? Or should we take one or two more questions? Um, I think we should probably take it into the breakout room. All right. Okay. Great. So if, if we haven't answered uh, your question here, um, please um, encourage you to bring it up in the breakout rooms. We're going to um, have half an hour. Um, we'll have three breakout rooms. Um, uh, I just want to make sure that I'm just checking my notes here. Um, should there be any areas or anything that we haven't covered so far, I invite you uh, to share your thoughts and ask questions by contacting the international team. We pride mm -hmm. ourselves in being responsive to individuals in the sector who are trying to figure out um, moving a project forward and it's a, it's a fit with the program and such. Um, an important note is, is that uh, from the breakout rooms, we won't return back to this uh, to the to the full group here. We'll simply end the session um, in each of the respective uh, uh, breakout rooms. Um, thanks again to everyone for joining us today. For it, and uh, we hope uh, to answer more of your questions in the breakout rooms and have a discussion. Um, thank you. Thanks, Norman. Thank you. Thank you.